Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are looking to learn how to resize components or images or move them around in AppGyver, I'm going to be covering the basics of how to do just that in today's video. Now before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. All right, so jumping straight in, I have a sample application that I made in a previous video. If you want to see more AppGyver basics, check the description below and check out the AppGyver playlist I have on my channel. But what we're going to do is assume you already know the basics of adding an image. So what we're going to do is we are just going to click an image. Let's just click and drag here and we'll use a static image, which is my logo. So we have this image here now. And this is basically what AppGyver is pulling up. Now, maybe you decide you want it bigger or smaller. You want to move it around. Moving the component is very, very easy. You can just drag and drop. So if we move it up all the way to the top, you can move it in between the two components. You can also use this tree over here. So if you click and hold on the image, you can move it just like you would be able to uh, when you're clicking and holding on the image itself. Now, if you want to actually change the size, we would go over to the layout section. So first and foremost, you have top and bottom gap. This seems pretty self-explanatory. If you want a larger gap, you would just choose a larger gap. You can choose the number of pixels. Percentage is not supported here, but you could choose a formula. Bearing in mind, if you're trying to get this to be visible across essentially different device types, you need to consider that. So for example, a larger tablet may require a little bit more space than a smaller device to make it look more consistent. So you may need to figure out how to make that work. But the idea here is small space, large space just chooses the amount of gap between the top and same thing for the bottom. You can do horizontal spacing as well. But what we're looking at really is just the position and the width and height. So for position, you can basically just choose where the image is going to be located. It's a little different for mine since it's basically full size. So we're basically maxed out. So one thing to consider here is we, if we just chose this to the middle, we have this grow to full width option. So grows to full width it can get. If we want to fit the content, we could choose that option. But because I have a very large image, it doesn't really look like it's changing. So another option is exact size. So we could choose by the number of pixels. So maybe we want to make it 200 by, let's just say 200 and see what that looks like. Well, now all of a sudden you'll see the image is a little bit smaller. And now we can change the alignment a little bit better based on these options. So horizontally in the middle, horizontally to the left. You can also choose the padding options here. So you'll see what that looks like. So if we just wanted to play around, you could see you have padding from top, left, right, and bottom. So if you were to change the bottom, and then we could also change from the right to the left. Um, so you need to kind of play around with these because it can potentially conflict with your aligning options as well. So if you ever need to, you can just click clear values to kind of reset everything and then choose the alignment that works best for you. You also have your positioning here as an option. Be careful with these, as you can tell, it's really easy to kind of change it and put it over top of other content. Now, another thing to consider here is you don't have to only use positive values. So for example, if we were to use 28 right here, you'll see it puts 28 pixels of spacing. But if you wanted, you could also do negative 28. And you'll see now the image is actually going up. And then if we chose negative 100, you'll see it brings the image up. So you have the ability to put components in different areas. Now, you may think this doesn't make sense for this particular situation. However, if we decided we wanted to make this zero, one reason this could be useful, maybe you have this button here and you decide, you know what, I want to resize the button or change it. So you can choose width and height. We can choose exact size and you'll see now the button is much smaller. And then we could choose size based on custom and choose the grow to width and grow to height options. So you'll see you have tons of different options in this width to height menu. But let's just say we click on exact size. And then maybe we decide, okay, you know, we want the position to change. So maybe we want it to be all the way over to the right. But you'll notice we can't put the button right here because it would technically be over top of the image. It's either above or below. So this would be a time where we could potentially decide, all right, we're going to go to position. And then from the top, we could decide, all right, we want to space 
28's not enough, so maybe we want to do 150. Well, now we have the button side by side with this component, which normally would not be possible because the components are essentially stacked. So we can't drag this text over to be where this button is, but we can adjust the padding or spacing to enable us to do this. So we now have this image off to the left and this button off to the right. So you can adjust those settings. Now, just bear in mind when you're doing this, it could look different on different display types. So if we open the app preview portal and we choose the application, and this is the actual page I chose, you'll notice that we'll first have to save our changes and let's see what it looks like now. So if we click on this button, you'll see this looks a lot different. So we have the image over here to the left and the button to the right, but we're viewing this on a web page. So if we view it as a mobile application, for example, if we right click and click inspect, we can choose a different device type. So let's just say we want to view this as a different type of a device. So maybe you want to view it as like an iPhone or as some other type of device. You can kind of change that. So let's just say iPhone SE. You'll see that these would potentially be kind of smushed together. But maybe if we chose a Surface Pro 7, they wouldn't be as close. So as you're kind of cycling through the device types, you'll start to notice you may need to use some custom formulas or better determine how to make the sizing and spacing work so that it looks consistent across all device types that you plan to basically create your application for. But that's something for you to kind of work through as far as testing is concerned. So as far as it's concerned for this video, we walked through the image resizing and the component resizing basics. For components where this is available, you basically just go over to layout. For width and height, you would choose any of the options that are presented here. You can also choose positioning and padding. And then you can also adjust top and bottom gap and horizontal spacing. And then again, for the sizing of the item itself, just try to make sure that you can create it and make it you know specific to whatever type of device that you're using so that covers the basics of your content kind of updating that and then moving it around to make it really look however it is you prefer for it to look so if you have any questions drop them in the comment box below and i'll see you all in the next video